That's the sink and see. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Depending on where you are geographically in this beautiful thing we call the world. And I'm so overjoyed as I am every time we get together to bring you this episode, this web series we call Math Men About Their Health, where the men are taking accountability and engaging in conversation, talking about the topics that we just don't like to talk about sometimes, but we are here for encouragement and inspiration. And if we can help one man get back on track or start to take accountability for his health, then I think this has been a success. But today it's a Mother's Day special episode where we have two of the world's most beautiful queens ever. And I know my gentlemen will echo those same sentiments. We have Cheryl Monet out of the great state of New Jersey. Welcome, 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 Queen Cheryl. And then we have Queen Pastor Cynthia Williams, and I hope I got the last name right, Pastor Cynthia, and welcome to you, and thank you both for taking time out of this weekend, right, because this is Mother's Day, and I and I had something that I said to my mother a long time ago, Mom, every day is Mother's Day, every day, so I believe that every day is Mother's Day, but, you know, we do recognize it this Sunday, tomorrow, and this entire weekend, so Happy Mother's Day to the Queens. And again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. But my name is Troy Richardson. I'm one of the tri hosts of this. And tri, that means three. So the second host is out of the UK. My brother, international influencer, businessman, so many titles. I'm not even going to get into that. But this is my brother, Eunice Kamara. And then we have Dr. Dre, D O C T O R D R E. Dr. Dre out of Long Island, New York, Yo MTV Raps, so many other things this brother's doing. Again, we only have about an hour. It'd take me a whole day to, to just list all the accolades. But we're going to hopefully give you the information that you need. In this episode, we're going to talk about working together, the men, the women, the kings and the queens coming together so that we can make us all healthier. So I'm going to just kick it off with my brother Eunice and get your perspective on how we can work together, Eunice. Well, thank you so much, uh, my brother Troy. I want to acknowledge the queens in the room as well, Pastor Cynthia Williams and my partner in crime, Cheryl Romanette, and my brother, Dr. Troy. You know, I'm a mama's boy, and a woman is a backbone to a strong man. So I believe that if we empower our women, they're able to do phenomenal things with our younger generation and with also the men. So women teaches our children nurture. So I think that a woman can do anything that she sets her mind to. So I'm not taking credit from us, Troy, Dr. Dre, or our listeners. All I'm saying is that with the support of a woman, so many other doors can open. And, you know, I always take my hat off to all the strong women in, in the room, in the house, around the world. But... All I'm saying is we have to consistently elevate our women. We have to treat them with respect. We have to give them their accolades. And I cannot hold the mic anymore because there's so many things I can say, but I pass the mic to my brother, Dr. Dre. Wow, that's fire. That's beyond fire. That's the heat that we need to be consistent with. Yes, my name is Dr. Dre. Um, being a blind amputee and a type 2 diabetic and consider myself to be super B-A-D, that means nothing on this planet that I cannot do without the creator, the master planner, and the blessings of incredible queens, ladies, women, children. 
most important factor that makes this thing spin. Because the thing about women and ladies, they know when things are right and they understand when things are not in the right place. And the thing is, our level of communication has to be broadened and we have to start communicating and listening better to each other. Because whether you're in whatever physical relationship, mental relationship, emotional relationship, it's how we collaborate as human beings and in humanity is what's going to help us survive. So there's no way ever on this planet at a young man who just turned 60 years of age and has been blessed with father time with his hand on my back and mother nature's guidance, insurance, nutrition, and blessings to breathe every day that I don't uplift, support, and ask for the blessings from our queens. And I find that when we don't protect our queens, our mothers, aunts, daughters, cousins, princesses, you name it, across the board, the earth shifts a little unsteady because women don't run out and start wars. They don't do that. They may, they may argue sometimes over purchases at a clothing store, at a, uh, a makeup counter, or in a food store, or anything. But women's first instincts, especially mothers, and the great blessing that we have with mothers being Mother's Day is in our path and in our sights, is how they protect the family, especially their offspring. And you find when that doesn't happen, the woman... And the ladies, something else has happened severe in their life, lifetime. And that's why it's up to us. And I don't always want to yell kings. I want to yell gentlemen. Because the key to that is gentle and then man. If we come forth as gentle men to help support these queens, you would be surprised how life rolls through. Because the thing when I was growing up, being the youth and the youngest of our family with my blessed cousin, which we were called twins. We got to hear everything, especially from a woman's perspective, because we were dragged around by our mothers, aunties, older sisters, grandmas, grandma's friend. And it's like, when we got to our fathers, we were always in less defense mode, but in trying to pair up and find best ways to succeed. And for those that were blessed to be um, in a two family home, and even those that were blessed to be in a one family home, we watched those reactions to everyone. So the blessing here on this Mother's Day weekend is thank you, thank you, thank you, Queens. Help us to move forward in all of our destinies. It's so important. So with that being said, Troy, back to you from the creator, from the master planner, and the great Unisa. Please, Troy, the floor is yours. I mean, both of you guys were saying similar things that we need to support, uplift, protect, and just do everything we can for our sisters, right? Because if they're not right, how are they going to be able to contribute to not only our health, but the health of the entire family. So with that being said, we're going to hear from one of the queens. I'm going to go to Cheryl Manette. And Cheryl, again, such a kindred soul. When I was told that you're going to be on this broadcast, I was like, oh my God. And if we had outtakes of when it was just you and I in here, it would have made the world's funniest bloopers for sure because I was acting mm -hmm. a fool. I was acting a fool. But Cheryl, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Troy. And it's a pleasure to be here with you three gentlemen. As Dr. Dre said, a gentle man is really what a woman wants, no matter what. We were placed here, it is my belief that we were placed here to be a help mate to man, to the other gender. And with that being said, it's not to be said that we're less than, above, or equal to, but just what it says, to be a helpmate. So with that, to lift them up, to encourage them, to empower them, 
but we also need to be supported, to be loved, to be nurtured, to be able to feel that we are safe because when we are in our space, our realm of peace and calm, it's unbelievable the things that we can accomplish, not just for ourselves, but for the men in our lives. And a lot of people don't understand that, that dynamic, but that is the most powerful dynamic. When a man supports a woman, a woman is able to support that man beyond his imagination and sometimes beyond her imagination. But because we are nurturers, we, we look at the entire picture and we pull from that so that we can assist and correct. We're not usually running out there starting wars at all because we like our peace, we like our sanctity, we like our wholeness. And that's what we try to sustain in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And I know for the men in my life, they're truly special to me and I love them dearly. And I want them to be at their optimal best levels all the time. Will they be at peak performance 100% of the time? No. But when they're not, I want them to be aware of the signs to let them know, hey, just like your car, when you're driving, if it starts to putter, right? If it's not driving in straight alignment, it's rearing off to the left or the right, it's time to go in and get things checked. And it's the same with our body. Our bodies are machines. We are energy beings, but we are machines and food is our fuel. The nutrition, what you put in is what you get out, right? So with that, heed the signs. Because guys, we really want you to be, to be the best that you can be. That is what we want. Because when you're well, that makes us happy. And nutrition is a big part of that. Be mindful of what you put in because again, food is your fuel. So I don't use the word diet. I use the word nutrition because that's what it is. Getting those necessary vitamins in order to feed your organs, to, to take care of you on the molecular level is what needs to be done. And I know there are men that, you know, they sit down at the table, you bring the food out and they're like, mm. I don't want those vegetables. Well, you know what? You're going to have vegetables today if I'm serving you because that's part of the process. It's what your body needs. Maybe your taste buds don't want it, but it's what your body needs. And because of the love, you will be served. And on that, I'll pause and hand it back to you, Troy. Well, Queen Cheryl, um, again, right on point with everything you said, the nutrition, is is vital, right? And people who know me know I'm a global health advocate. I grow my own fruits and vegetables. Well, not in the last couple of months because I had to put those things in storage, but it's a lifestyle, right? When you have a lifestyle, it's not a fad. It's not a diet. It's who you are. It's who you become. And you just do things instinctively from habit, right? And Every morning before I have either it's a coffee or a latte, I'm going to drink my water. And I took that advice from, you know, a well-known fitness expert. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So I did it and my body responded. I was like, wow, right? I drink a lot of water, but it wasn't the first thing I did in the morning. And I made that one simple change as Dr. Bill Sears would tell you, it all starts with one simple change. And if we can work on one, then move the two, then the three, you're gonna be amazed how your body's gonna respond with those changes. So with that being said, whoo, Pastor Cynthia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Troy, I appreciate it. And, um, and I'm grateful just to be here and offer up my contribution. What, everything that has been said thus far is just so wonderful. Um, and the thing for, for me 
um, that I could offer up here is that we were called to be in partnership together. The, the man and the woman were called to be in partnership together from the very onset of it all. And at, at some and some places there's there's roles that we have in this partnership. Um, but we're working when we're working together and we're on one accord, we're working for the same goals and the same mission. We're not trying to outdo and we're not trying to compete. Because when there is a king and the king feels like the king, then there's a, the queen is the queen is right there by his side. And, it, and you know, the, the, even the word teaches us that, you know, even when we talk about from the beginning, you know, he did find of a wife, find of a good thing, you know, everything about them. And I, and I heard Cheryl, Lady Cheryl talking about, you know, the, the woman being the, the help meet, right? Because she is his rib. She is what was taken out of the man um, and, and formed to be that help meet, right? So she's not to go, uh, like you said, she's not to go ahead. She's not to go behind. She's to, she's to go alongside, okay? Because she was taken from his side, all right? And so what is so um, important is that everything that we do has to be built on L-O-V-E. It is love. When we Even when we cook, we're talking about, you know, the nutrients and things like that. And I'm so glad you pointed out, Troy, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. And when we change our lifestyle, okay, we change our, we change our mindset. Once the mindset, once the mind is changed, okay, it becomes an automatic thing. You know, the, 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 there's, some, there's some belief system to anything that we do after we do it 21 times, it, 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 it becomes habitual, right? And so a, a lot of this is just going back to the, the beginning because in the, in the beginning, it, everything, everything that we're supposed to be digesting, okay, are the, are the herbs and the natural, the natural things that are, that are, are grown here in, here in the earth, right? When we start going in and we started getting all the processed meats and foods and things, that's what started to take us out. Not only did it start to take us out physically, but it also started to take us out mentally. And so our minds, this is why you, you find so many people that are going through so many things in their minds. A lot of it stems back to what we've been eating, what we've been feeding ourselves. You know, um, when we as, as women, and, and we, we always hear the terminology that we're so, you know, we're, we're, we're the strong, strong. Let me tell you something. I want I want to be that 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 woman where I don't have to overdo it, but ben and I we do it together. Where we we go out and we take walks together. You know, distant. You know, we're on one accord. We're building together. You know, we're 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 making we're creating vision together. You know, I've been married thirty going on thirty six years this year, and Amen. and I'm still always learning. I learn who my husband is each and every day. In the 36 years, I still, there's still a lot more for me to learn ab about him, you know? And a lot of times we have that, that, that thought process that we, we, we a lot of times look at their flaws. We look at the flaws of people and then, and then we try to point out the flaws, but we're not there. We're not their creators. We're not, we did not create, we did not create the man and we did not create the woman. OK, so if we're going to if we're going to have anything that we're going to do, we need to go back to the creator. All right. And seek guidance and wisdom from him, even on how to be there for that king, you know, so that he feel he feels like a king. I can't I can't make you be anything, but I can be a contributor to remind you of who you are. OK, and who you were created to be. And so many times that doesn't that doesn't happen, you know, because we just point out the flaws in people. You know, um, we all have flaws. We all have things that we that we walk through, that we go through. We all have a story. We can all sit here all day long and and go, woe is me. But until we get to the place where we understand, you know, I can't do anything. I can have to take up my cross and I've got to follow him. And 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 the and the man has to do the same. But we can't beat each other up. We're called to do this thing together. You understand? And so when I create when I create the meals for my for my, it has to be done in love. You know, mm -hmm. we say, you know, baby, I don't I don't beat you up and and tell you you need to do this, you need to do that. No, baby, it's it's all in how we phrase it. You know, babe, you know what? You know, let's try let's try this. 
you know, let's try, let's try eating this way. Let's try, let's try, let's try doing this, do, doing something different. We got all got this hypertension and all of this and that, you know, let's pull back from some of the salt intake that we're doing. You know, let's, let's, let's do a, a challenge where we're, we're drinking a little more water today. Let's see who can, who can out drink uh, who could drink more water today? Make it, make it fun. Make it, make it something that we both can, you know, strive to do together because it, again, it's changing the mindset of what we've become so familiar with and so comfortable doing that we, when we work together, oh my God, like my sister said, you know, we want to see our men win, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to have to do this thing by ourselves and continue to be told how strong we are. Listen, Sometimes we don't we don't want to be that daggone strong where we where we got to because we've got to do it without you. We want to do it with you. You know, we want to celebrate one another in this thing. And that's 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 where I'm at with this, Troy, is that when we do when we do it together, we're so much greater together than we ever could be apart, you know. And so we lift up, we applaud you kings here on today. I know it's Mother's Day weekend, but you know what? We applaud you kings here today for just honoring us. And we got to do better, even as the queens, that we don't just look at the flaws and talk about, oh, he ain't no good, or, or he ain't this, and he ain't that. You know what? Because it's a reflection of who we are. If you go back to what he was saying earlier to, uh, on this call, it's a reflection of who we are, because we are the, we are the birth, we are, we're the life givers, we're the nurturers, okay? So if, if, if he's not no good, what does that say about us? Amen, 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 and a woman too. Let me tell you, Pastor Cynthia, I love your energy, number one. You you matching mine almost, almost, but I love what you bring <laughs> in the value added is, is special, very special, and thank you for your input. But, um, you know- Excuse me, Troy. Yes. This is Dr. Dre. Can I just uh, add just a little bit of, uh, seasoning to what's been said so far. Seasoning, okay. Just a little seasoning because I, I'm I'm not the greatest chef, but I may be the best taster. But I knew when to make certain changes. And the blessing is, the only thing consistent in this universe is change. The only thing consistent is change, and there's no success success ever built without the lesson of failure. I'll repeat that. There's no success on this planet that was not contributed from failure because the lesson can be learned by the mistakes so that our perfection can be established. And there was only one being that ever walked on this planet that was considered perfected. So I never try to even think of that comparison. What I try to say is, let us walk in the light and absorb its rays so that we become stronger, smarter, considerate, and a collaborative effort with our queens. That's what's so important, at least on this Mother's Day. Having lost my mother it was a year ago, it's not a pain. It's an absence that I share. It's an absence that I feel because I know that spirit is with me every day in every prayer and in every thought that I have. So let us not forget the creator is a massive spirit that created this universe. The master plan is the one who walks us down the path. And mother nature, mother nature has never lost a fight ever. Some people are trying to say, well, I know when this is going to happen. Well, and we know for sure. And this is what happened over here. And this is this. And Mother Nature's such thing goes, no, it's not. You guys are eradicating what was given to you. Maybe you need to let the ladies take it. Maybe you need to let the queens help guide it. As it was said, not to follow, not to lead, but stand side by side. That sharing, that blessing, that love, love is what will keep us moving forward. Dr. Dre, and I'm out. Pumbaye. Well, Dre, you just, you provoked a couple of thoughts 
with those words. One was Confucius, where he said the greatest victory is not to have never fallen, but to rise every time you do fall, right? Yes, sir. Then the late, great Coretta Scott King, my third mother, she said, if we want this world to change, then we must become that change, right? A lot of things are in our control, but we just don't cease that control. We don't take control and, and make those, again, one simple change will make a big difference. And I always tell people, when you come upon a stranger, like you're in the store, and I was in the store today, and it was Mother's Day. Everybody was so happy, right, for the most part. And if anybody knows me, I'm an ambassador. I'm, I'm, I'm that spread the gospel guy, spread joy. And I was in the store, and everybody's buying the balloons, and and, and I get there, and the, and the young lady, she's like, well, what, what are you doing for your mother today? I said, well, I lost my mother back in 2008, the late, great Dorothy Gray Richardson, known as the Black Mother Teresa, gospel singer. And um, I use this time to reflect, right? I use it for reflection, to remember all the times that I was with my mother and the dinners and the surprises when I came home from the Air Force and just the look in her eyes because I never told her for the most part when I was going to show up. And you just remember those, those moments as, as I'm sure Dre can attest to you, you reflect in a way that it's just you and your mom in that moment. And I have a picture of my mother, my mother right over there. And I look at her every day, every night, and I just speak to her and she's never gonna leave my spirit, right? Dre said the spirit. And when we're collectively coming together as men and women, kings and queens, for the health of our families and each other, we have to hold each other accountable. As the pastor said, try different things. And sometimes it is communication, right? You're not forcing, you're going to eat more vegetables. We just came from the doctor and you, your, your, your blood is, it's out of whack. You're going to eat this. But if you say, baby, listen, I've just found this new recipe. It, it looks amazing. I'm going to whip it up. I'm going to grill it. I know you like certain seasonings. We're going to put a little bit of that on there for you. And let me know how you, how you feel about this, right? That sounds a lot better than you going to eat this. But it's accountability, it's communication, and being able to provide that solution, right? You just don't want to talk about what you should do. Be ready to prepare that meal, to be the first one to start drinking more water, um, to be the first one to leave the white bread alone. Just leave the whites alone, the sugars, the salts, the bleach, food right? Get it out of your life. Get it out of the pantry. Don't bring it into the home, especially when we're talking about the kids. I know the kids want that, all that nonsense, but we have to really control what everyone in that household is putting in their mouth, right? We have to take control of that and we can control that. So with that, I'm going to go to Dre, I think back to Dre and just I want to talk about your mom because you just lost her a year ago. And I want to hear about the things that she told you and taught you that you still use today. Well, thank you, Troy. I appreciate that. That is Dr. Drake. Um, I didn't lose my mother. My mother went to the kingdom so she can actually be a greater assistance to our lives as a family. Growing up with Cynthia Williams, my pastor, my cousin, one of my best friends on this planet, we had mothers. We had the greatest collection of ladies that I ever met that always made me challenge when I would date someone and bring them around 
that these women, our Aunt Ethel, uh, my Aunt Eleanor, our Grandma Charlie, uh, my Aunt um, Evie, uh, my godmother, Mrs. Bailey, Mrs. Annabelle Bailey, and all around my, my community, from Mildred Smith to Mildred Little, to um, Mrs. Brandon, to uh, Emily Johnson. I mean, I was always surrounded by these powerful women. And not powerful because just the spirit, just how they held and kept us all in check growing up. And when you see those type of examples from my Aunt Sylvia's, my Aunt, Aunt Ricky's, and, and just neighbors around the block, and, and it was always the women who were always in the leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And then when our fathers who were doing the work and trying to bring it home and keep us, you know, provide for us. It was always my mother who would catch us doing something wrong. My Aunt Ethel had a quick hand with a shoe, but hit you with love. My Aunt Eleanor, Cynthia's mom, was the greatest breakfast chef ever. We all wanted to stay over at Cynthia's house with my Aunt, uh, Aunt Eleanor and my cousin Kevin and my Uncle Sonny because when we woke up on that morning, she would have a breakfast rivaled by no one else. No one else. And it was like, wow, this is the way it's supposed to be. They brought a comfort of family that the Waltons couldn't even play with. They brought us from the James Evans Sr. and Florida Evans family to Fred G. Sanford and Lamont Sanford to the Jeffersons to That's My Mama to um, you name it. What's happening? We had that kind of comfort. And they could also display it when Roots came around and said, my mother couldn't watch Roots. She would have to get the reports on it. But I could call up other female in my family and listen to what they thought about it and that experience. So I don't consider that I lost my mother. 95 years young, that's a blessing. That's a blessing you can't even write on a piece of paper. Because when her mother passed, and Cynthia can attest to this, I think she was in her late 90s also. And when she passed, we didn't feel like, oh, my God, look, we lost. We actually took a deep breath and said, man, I'm glad we had this time. So when we lost Cynthia's mother, too, my Aunt Eleanor, we la I mean, we were all a ridiculous family who laughed at funerals, laughed when we got with the repasses, and always talked about where we grew up. So in our tears of missing that person there with us, we the blessings are so strong. I can communicate with you with that like it was yesterday. So I would like to throw a question to both ladies. And I'm going to keep it real simple. What would be your greatest ideal Mother's Day present? Think of yourself first. And then you can answer with whatever else you wish to follow. But the question is, what would be your greatest Mother's Day wish? Anyone can jump in and, and take that question, please. Now, Dre, before we do that, I'm going to give you, Nisa, a chance to touch on his mom. And hopefully, Pastor Cynthia will be back in after before he gets finished. So, Nisa, let's touch on your amazing mother. Much appreciated. You know, my mom always tells me a woman is the most precious thing a man can have. It's a, not just a wife or girlfriend, but a lifetime partner, a friend, a friend that is there for you to cry on, a friend that is there to talk to during difficult and good times. You know, I've sat here Normally, you know I'm very outgoing with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> but but you know, one thing my mom taught me is listen to a woman. Don't always be the talkative one. Learn to listen. And when you listen, you're able to communicate. The lessons that a woman can teach a man, another man would never be able to judge that. So... I've come to understand that when a woman speak, render an air, not a voice. Never disrespect your woman, that's your queen, that's your partner, because the way you treat that woman 
that's the way another man might treat that woman. But from another man see the way you respect your woman, the way you cherish her, they will respect that woman. So when we understand this concept, I think the relationship, because the way relationships are nowadays, there's so many divorces going on. Unlike back in the day when they tried to mend the relationship. You work so hard to build a relationship, but you're so quick to walk out of it. All the time you invest all the energy, but because the fact that that woman don't agree with you or that man don't agree with you, you want to hop out of it. What make you think the grass is going to be green on the other side? So I just want to say that these are some of the gems that my mom have always taught me. Don't disrespect a woman because you will have a daughter. You have sisters. Mm. How would you feel if another man was to treat your daughter, your sister, or me that way? So for me, many people that are watching knows arguing with the woman don't give me value. But when I'm able to say, baby, I'm sorry, let's talk about it. It gives her more value. And I always say, it's not a matter of me making her happy. It's a matter of me seeing her happy. That gives me joy. Thank you. That's my man. Excellent. excellent Full of wisdom, excellent. baby. Full of wisdom. And that's why I love this platform because we want to encourage others, but many times I leave here encouraged and inspired, right? So Pastor Cynthia, I'm not sure if you got that question from Dr. Dre that he posed to the two queens, but I think he, Dre, just ask the question again, my brother. Question is very simple. What is your greatest Mother's Day wish and gift for yourself? What was your what is your greatest Mother's Day gift wish for yourself? And then you can add it any other way you wish to enjoy yourself. It's fine. But the, the, the reason is I say that because sometimes, and I think it was so eloquently put by Anissa, we have to learn, and I'm just gonna change one more thing. We have to hear you, and the listening process is how we have to learn. Because you can't hear and listen together because you can hear with your ears and your mouth can't flap. But when you listen, you have to reflect. So that's the question. What would be your greatest Mother's Day gift for you? Whatever you wish. Yeah. And we're going to let greatest Cheryl Mother's go ahead and lead on that one. You. Cheryl. Yes, Troy. Uh, thank you. And thank you for the question, uh, Dr. Dre. Appreciate that. Because a lot of times as women, we're so busy thinking about everything else and making making sure things are good for everyone else that we put ourselves on the back burner. But for me, on Mother's Day in particular, my wish would be to have my family around me, have my children and all my family around me because we are such a funny bunch and such a loving group that the energy and people even comment on it, that the energy we exude when we are amongst each other, the thrills, the shrills, the laughter, the hugs, the jokes, the, you know, the jokes that no one takes to heart. It's just love, love, love. That for me, mm. to be with my family <laughs> would be my wish. Yes. Boom yeah. by yeah. Because as Troy was saying, when he would surprise his mom, he would just come home, you know, unexpectedly to her, but plan for him to see that look in her eyes. It's that feeling we get when we see our children. It's, it's different when they're young, but when they're young adults or even older adults and they come to see us, you the words cannot describe the feeling that you get as a mother. You turn around and they surprise you, you know, because children are who they are. They're about their business, right? They're about their life. So it's a special thing when they all say, 
we're coming to see you and they show up. It's a great thing. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Pastor Cynthia. Yes. Um, for me, the greatest thing, and I love the question, um, the greatest thing also for me is family, family time, being with my children, being with my grandchildren, because that's what I grew up on as um, Dr. Dre is your, um, that's what we grew up on. We grew up on, you know, that family time, you know, special, and it, and it wasn't even just special occasions. Every occasion should be special. You know, it shouldn't just be Mother's Day. Every day should be Mother's Day. Every day should be Father's Day. You yes. know, it's the world. For me, it's the world that does all of this running around, getting flowers on this one day and doing all this. And and and, and the economy, the economy gets all this money that, you know, and we and we go trying to do this to, to show our love. Our love cannot be predicated upon things. They can't. They, it could never be predicated upon how many flowers you buy me how much candy you buy me or any of those things. Our, our love has to be shown, okay? It has to be shown on a daily basis, not just on one day out of the year, because we're not just mothers one day out of the year, just like you you all are not just fathers one day out of the year, you know? But family time is everything. So when you so what you're building, when you're building when those children, you train them up in the way they should go. And when they get older, they won't depart from it. It's because we are teaching, the Bible teaches us that the older women must teach the younger women. They must teach them how to be good homemakers, how to be, how to provide, how to, you know, nurture the family and how to, you know, just demonstrate and model, okay, who what a good, a good mother is. And, and this way, this is why, Cheryl, those children, when they come, when they get older, they want to come home, just like right. you, Troy, wanted to come home. You wanted to be around your mother. Why? Because she demonstrated motherhood your entire life. And so you felt that sense of, of belonging to there. It's a horrible thing. And I know too many and counsel too many that don't want to go home to their mothers. They don't want to be around them. Why? Because of an environment that was set or established when they were younger. And so it's so very important. That we, that we take moments, okay, to reflect with our families, allow people to grow, allow people forgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of the greatest things that tears our families apart mm. on a regular basis is that spirit of unforgiveness. How dare us, how dare us not forgive someone for making a mistake, making a, making a, a wrong decision or wrong choice that you thought impacted you and you took it personally. And so for so so you no longer want to speak to this person ever again. How dare we do that? Imagine if God did us that way. Imagine if God if God treated us and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every last one of us. Okay? Even when we think we're doing good, we don't jacked it up. Okay? <laughs> so imagine if he treated us that way. How dare us with our with our <laughs> We have to walk in humility. We always have to be quick for reconciliation, okay? Get over it. Because the worst thing in the world is for someone to go home to be with the Lord like my, mo like my, my mother is, um, Andre's mother is, okay? And you have to show up at that home going and y'all ain't even speaking to each other. Are you kidding me right now? Especially when... Are you kidding me right now? When when that is the time where each where you need each other the most to come together in love, and and to help each other get through that that grieving process, but instead we not we we ain't even we ain't even talking. No, this is the day and the hour for real for real, because nobody nobody knows when 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 God is going to call any of us back to glory. Nobody knows, so we got to get it right now while we still have time. And that's real talk, okay? So every day has to be a mother's day. Don't bring, don't bring me the flowers just on today. Bring me flowers just because. Just, just because, okay? okay. And, let, and let's, take it, let's take it from there. Let's try to out, outdo each other's giving, all right? 
The Bible teaches us, I'm going to leave you right here. A wise woman builds up her home and a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. That's what the word of God says. Proverbs 14, what? A wise woman builds up her home. And how does she build it? And this is the problem. We've been building it on, we've been building it on Hallmark. We've been building it on, 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 on consumer goods, trying to buy people stuff. No, you better build it on the foundation and the principles of God's word. Because that's a home that will 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 be able to grow and grow strong because it has the right foundation. We building it on stuff that can't even sustain us, and this is why we can fall out of love so quickly with one another because we built it on faith and false love anyway, things that were tangible, okay, and not with who God is first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness, and all those things will be added unto you. Amen. We got to do better. We got to do better. Amen. Amen. I want to. Amen. I want to piggyback some sentiments that Dre uh, said earlier by mentioning a couple of the strong women in my life, my aunts, and um, they're just incredible. So many childhood stories. But Aunt Ruby, Aunt Georgia, Aunt Lothary, we call her Aunt Baby. She was the baby of the of the, the family. Um, my cousin Vera, cousin Kima, um, cousin Tracy, all these strong women that I've been surrounded with. Um, Melba, um, just strong women that have shown me a man, right? How to live your life by leading by example. I saw it firsthand. Many different situations that they were in that, thank God, put me there so that I could witness it and see how they might have handled this versus this. Um, the humility that they displayed. Pastor, I think you mentioned humility. The, the ability to take the lead when needed, when they needed to, right? Especially my aunt baby. I, I aspire to be like her because she went to Albany State University. I went to Albany State University. She was the, I think, um, the third highest ranking official in New York State at one point by the head of the um, Parks and Recreation. And I used to go to her office and I used to see people just attracted to her because she was leading this large organization. So when you see that as a young man, your aunt has this type of power and you would never know she had that power because she didn't yield it. She used, it, she used her power to empower others. And I saw that and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want that power, but I want to be able to use it to empower others. And I think I've made her very proud. Matter of fact, I know I have because she's told me on several occasions. Um, but this is the power of a woman, right? But as men, we have to observe, right? Because sometimes if you're not observing and you're not hearing and listening, then you're not going to absorb those jewels and be able to carry those on with you for your life like I have and like Dre has and like Eunice has. We we all were consistent in tapping in to the power that our mothers uh, displayed to us. And they, they empowered us as young men to, I believe Pastor Arturo said, grow, right? You got to allow your children to grow into who they're going to be. You can give them all the examples, all the information in the world, but you have to allow them to evolve into that person, into that woman, into that man that they're going to be. So we're going to get ready to close here, but I want to hear closing remarks from all of you because this has been incredible for me. And I know once the audience gets this, they're going to love what they hear. So let's start first 
with the Queens. And we're going to go Pastor Cynthia, Cheryl Manet, Eunice, and then Dr. Dre will close us out. Okay? So, Pastor Cynthia, your closing words. Thank you so much, Troy. This has been phenomenal. This has truly been phenomenal. I am, am delighted to have been a part of it. My closing remarks, if I had to say anything, is, you know, to, to just really just let myself off the hook. Let myself off the hook of trying to be perfect, but learn to perfect it. Learn how to perfect it and who I am and who in, in who created me. Um, and and just, just learn to do better. You know, as you said, you know, we're not, this, this life isn't just for us. It's for us to share it. It's for us to, you're right, to empower others. This is why some of the things that we even go through is, is to show and it's an example of what it's like. I thank God for the, for the forerunners that I've had in my life that has shown me on how to do it better. And so every day, that's what I'm, I'm trying to present a better version of myself each and every day so that I can continue to go and empower everywhere that I step foot, that I'm looking to empower other women to understand that, you know, we're in this thing together and together we win. Okay. We're not competing. We're collaborating. And so that is what is so valuable and important to me. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl Manette. Yes, I want to speak directly to the men, being that this is math, men about their health. Do understand that your health is very important. And if you communicate with the women around you, they will support you. If you let them know what's going on, they will step up. They will come with you to appointments. They will come with you to have procedures done. They will be there for you. And I'm not just talking about someone that you may be in a relationship just talk to the women around you, communicate. As Troy said, communication is key. And the more you communicate with us, the more we can be there for you to help, help keep you strong. And when it comes to being strong, as um, Pastor Cynthia said earlier, yes, we hear a lot of times as women, oh, you're so strong, you're so strong. And we may be, but we want the men around us to be healthy and strong because as women, we don't want to be strong all the time. We want to be able to be soft and just lean back in our feminine. But in order to do that, we need our men to be able to take the reins. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Eunice Camaro. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This, this is a master class right here. And the thing I enjoy about this is that we get to hear different perspectives. And during that, we had banter about this before, you know, different perspectives. But what I want to leave with everyone here is <clears throat> we have to understand that we're all different. We cannot expect someone to be like me. I cannot expect my woman to be like me. Different upbringings, different backgrounds. Even if it's the same culture, let that woman have her own mind. The more pressure you put on that woman, it can lead her to depression, to isolation, and to so many other factors. Accept that woman as your partner, as another being, as, an, as your soulmate. Do not deprive her from who she is or who she's meant to be. Show her nurture. Give her the respect that she deserves. And don't pump your chest up as a man and say, I demand. You give me respect. I demand this. What does that mean? It's been stated here today. The more you elevate your woman. And the ladies, the queens have stated that themselves. It's not all the time they want to be strong. 
Sometimes they need us to step onto the plate. So love your woman, respect your woman, and accept her for who she is. And you will have a blissful relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice Kamara. Dr. Dre. Behold, there is nothing greater than yourself. I start those magical words that were said in the teleseries Roots as Alexander Haley's great, great ancestors were born and taken out and shown to the moon how great we could be. Having been in two marriages that ended, that each one for me were very painful, not because they were wrong and I was right, or I was wrong and they were right. That is not it. Because um, the blessing that brought me to do what I do now with the love, love experience, it is called the love, love experience purposely because it exchanges in our love, love fitness room with women of all colors, differences, men that come in and also join in. And we have great sessions discussing our health, wellness, fitness, and love, love. So when I returned from my doctor's appointment two weeks ago and listened to my endocrinologist yell, yippee, wow. And I spoke to my primary doctor who looked me in the eye and said, Mr. Brown, what are you doing? Because I went and had my blood work done to find out that my kidneys were in great shape. My liver was impeccable. My blood work was amazing. Greater, as as my, my primary always says, your cholesterol is better than mine. What are you doing? Your A1C is down to seven and a half. How are you doing this? A few quarters back, you were at 12 and a half. What did you do? And your glucose meter is now down to under 100. What are you doing? And I said, I walk over 5,000 steps a day in my fitness room and for myself. And I have a beautiful relationship with many women of all different types, ages, ethnic groups. And I get to hear their pain and share in their delights, which motivate me to keep moving forward. So when I was blessed with the gifts, and I'm just going to stay with uh, Pastor Cynthia's mother on Eleanor and my own mother, Ms. Alpine Browns, and her mother, Ms. Sally Charlie, I reflect back on not just holidays, but many family gatherings. When we used to watch our grandmother in the corner, she would be quiet and laughing. And at one time, I, I, I reached out to my cousin, because we were called twin cousins, because we are born months apart, same age. And we laugh about that too, together. And I said, I said, Cynthia, how come grandma never is the one in the top of the conversation? But every time she's with us, whether it be the barbecue, whether it be birthday, whether it be Christmas, whether it be Thanksgiving, or whether it be Mother's Day. And everybody, I remember that time she went to almost everybody's houses. And I don't want to leave my uncle, Uncle Bobo out, my Uncle Abdullah, and his beautiful white pad who passed away. She was always smiling. So I had to be curious, and I had to ask her one time, I was sitting there, and I said, Grandma, why every time we have these things, you're always smiling and quiet? She said, what else is there to say? Look at what we've done. And I sat back, and I said, what? She said, look at what we've done. There's no greater gift than what happens here. And to watch all those women go in the kitchen, help contribute by cooking, setting up the plates. And my own sister, which we call the general and a half, or we call it really the uh, the Al Sharpton of, uh, <laughs> of eulogies in our family because she always steps up and does her eulogy, then we can move forward. 
Even when my mother passed, I had to sit her down and say, no, I got this one. My son sang, and I got up there and because both our mothers, Cynthia's and mine, in their respective school administrations that they both worked in, were two of the most respected women in that building. Better than the principals, better than most teachers, but the advice, the guidance, and the love, the love they brought to those communities. I just sit back and, and just marvel. And I watched both of them because we were from opposite towns. And so when those two towns played basketball together in, 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 those, in those sessions, my aunt was on one side, my mother was on the other side. And it could go to a furor. And they could be cheering on each team on. And at the end, I watched both of those women rule those teams in that school district. Whether it be cooking, my mother helped cook for one session they had when they, they were playing each other and my aunt cooked vice versa. So for me, that blessing and that health check, and it took me a moment to get there. I said, there's nothing else I can do. I said, and, and Troy's in this room with me too and that's a great blessing. And I invite everyone to join with us because that's what the Love Love Experience Fitness Room is all about bringing other voices in to share those experiences, place out ideals of what we can do to make the greatest change, to be accountable to you first, that person, and the group second. So we don't sit in the room and, and judge, because I can't do that. I say in my prayer, Lord, teach me not to judge and not to hold others in judgment. And I mean it every morning. So I want to thank Troy for this blessing for our men's health and how important it is because I may not actually be able to move the mountain but I'm getting better putting a shoulder in it because Troy is there and your niece is there with me and now you beautiful ladies, you beautiful queens I wish you the greatest Mother's Day because in your blessing of what you wished doesn't cost a dime. And you've given the love. love. That's why they rejoin you. And the smile and the tears that are coming down my face, let me know we are on the right path. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With love, love. Wow. This has been emotional for me, folks. Um... People know I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I don't, I don't really, I really don't hold it in, you know? And I was brought up that way. Speak your mind, let it out, don't hold it in. And rarely do I hold it in. But I'm so, so grateful. And Dre, thank you for those words, but I deflect those, anything to the most high. Give him all the credit, all the glory. I'm just that global inspirational vessel. And I will continue to give and do my part as we all do, right? This is why we are all together here. And it's a true blessing as I'm looking at the screen and I'm, and I'm looking at you beautiful people with the beautiful hearts and the beautiful minds. It's just like your, your, your grandmother said, um, look at what we've done. And Queens, we're going to have to make this a reoccurring thing. It's not going to be every Mother's Day. We got to do this maybe quarterly. Bring you two back and maybe one other to have three. But you've added such value to what we do. And this is what it's all about, right? Encouraging and inspiring. And as my man Bill Duke says, aspire to inspire before you expire. And it's so true. It's so true. Don't wait till somebody's gone to wish you had the opportunity to speak to them, to love them, to just say, hey, my bad, we better than this. Just, just you be the one to make the first move. And I've done that in my past, in my family. I've done that. But um, guys, I'm just, again, so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the value you've added. Um, I do want to point out a couple of the sponsors, the Love Love Experience, 
nationwide tour. Look for that coming soon to a city near you. Masterminds Digital does all the digital editing, flyers, websites, you name it. They are geniuses at what they do, promoting your brand. And AYG Financial Services. You definitely want to tap into AYG. Accept your greatness. And I want to leave y'all with this. And you know what I'm about to say. Don't nobody love you more than Troy, but God. God bless you all. Have an amazing day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank God bless you. you.